Hello, and this is my product review of the projection alarm clock radio from Radio Shack. Some of the features, projected time visible even in daylight, sets automatically because it uses the atomic clock in Fort Collins, Colorado, dual alarms, auto brightness control, and same thing in Spanish. This is what it sort of looks like. And here is the real thing. And I'll put it down right here. The display looks a little faded, but that's because of the angle. Now, setup is not exactly 100% obvious. And I will show you some of the reasons for that while we take a tour. You got your snooze and your alarm buttons here. Now what's not obvious here is unlike most alarms when you depress a button it sets the alarm. It's the opposite. When you release the button it sets the alarm. And of course you got the snooze and the backlight which and you can see it has a dual alarm. I got that one set for a different time. It does receive a signal, hence the wave OK sign right there, from Fort Collins, Colorado. Now where I live, on the extreme eastern coast of the United States, I live on the reflected fringe area, meaning I can't even receive the original signal. It has to bounce off the Earth's atmosphere in order to get it. When you purchase one of these atomic clocks, I'll put it right there for you, it will not work during the day in terms of receiving the signal. You'll have to wait till around 1, 2, or 3 a.m. or so because of all the activity that happens out there in the real world. That being said, let's take another, let's take a quick tour right there. Is your little one and a half inch speaker with base ports, which pretty much almost every radio has to some extent nowadays. There's your volume control for the radio. Your up and down button, that's for setting time and changing radio stations. Set, that helps you set the various functions of the clock. And wave, that's the button you press to manually force a uh, synchronization of the clock, which on the extreme eastern and western coast will not work. Here's where it gets a little less than obvious in terms of setup. The projector, you got high, medium, auto, and off. Daylight savings time. If you observe daylight savings time, there are certain places that don't. You can have it auto or off. Lock time and date. If you have it in a lock position, you cannot change the time or the date. And then you have the option of the standard AM PM, which is the 12, or the military 24 setting. And then you get your time zone, Eastern, Central, Mountain, Pacific, and the reset if things go really bad. And the projector itself tilts 180 degrees. And the display can be, the physical display can be rotated. We'll show you that. There's the projection focus and the image rotate buttons. And if the power goes out, you supply yourself two AAA batteries. It does not come with those. And if you lose power, it will reset itself. For example, it comes with a six foot cord. However, this radio weighing just barely over a pound, when you stretch the cord, the radio will move. That's not a good thing. So when you reach the limits, this thing will like to move on you. So if you remove power or you lose it, that set of batteries will keep it 
going in memory. And once power is restored, it resets itself, as you're seeing right now, to the current date and time as seen by the atomic clock when it got its signal. So we know that the signal, the receiver works very well. Now, as I was referring to, setting it is not really all that straightforward. You will need the instruction manual to do that. And like I said, at this angle, the display appears a little faded, but it's perfectly fine as you probably have seen. To set the alarm, you would, hit, you would hold the set button in. Well, first it'll show you the month and the date. Then you press it again and hold it in. At that point, your first alarm shows up and you hit the up and down arrows. Well, let's try that again. There we go. To change the time, you hit it again and you got a choice of the bell or the radio. In this case, I got it set to radio. To change that, you hit the set button and I hit it too late. So if you hit the set button, it then actually goes as a second alarm. You can once again change it. And then you hit up and down. This time it's cooperating. And it goes between the bell, which is flashing, the radio, AM, then radio, FM. So some of this, like I said, you got to read the manual. Now, the projector, is the claim to fame of this projector clock is that even in bright daylight, you can see the time. We're going to test that theory out now. As you can see, I got the apartment all opened up. It is slightly messy, but the whole point is, with the lights as well, to prove to you that this thing really can project a very strong image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate it 180 degrees like so, and we're going to project it onto the refrigerator. So what I'm going to do now is hit the projector button. I'm looking for, okay, it's automatic. All right, it's a little hard to hit. There we go. And we got this projector rotate button right here, which if you can see rotates the time approximately 180 degrees. There we go. And that's the automatic setting, medium setting, and I'm sure you saw the little flash bright setting. So you can see it displays rather well. And what I'm going to do right now is, as far as I can take this, I got the, I got it about 12 feet away. And if I hit the big focus knob, oh no, you know, the focus knob's the small one, you can see that I can change the focus, make it nice and clear. I'm holding this about, I'm estimating around 18 feet from the refrigerator. As you can see in all this lighting, it does show up rather clear, so it does pass. And now I'm holding it roughly about eight feet away. And if you have, obviously if you're putting on furniture, it's gonna be probably like four or so feet away. It's a little blurry, so we hit the focus knob and there you have it, nice and clear. And more typical setup right here. And in fact, I'll put it right next to this compact fluorescent light fixture, which simulates perfectly 120 watts of a regular incandescent bulb. And if my elbow ain't in the way, you can, or my body, you can see it still shows up fairly clearly. 
So, so far, this thing really does pass the, it passes the inspection thus far. So my question is, what about the sound quality of the radio? Well, we got some buttons here that I haven't gone over. The power button, AM, FM, and auxiliary. You can use a mini, uh, you can use a mini uh, phono plug here to plug in an MP3 player or what have not. Sleep function, which will, and your memory, which if you use the presets. So to play the radio, you simply hit the power button and on goes the radio. Now the reception on this radio uses your six foot cable as an antenna and the reception on it is actually pretty good. As this station with a with a typical power cord antenna type uh, radio, usually my station doesn't come in very well. You got to hit a sweet spot. With this radio, fair use. No static at all. Excellent reception from this radio. And of course, if you might have heard, and I'm going to only do it for a few seconds because of fair use and copyright. There you go. So, uh, you can tell it's obviously, it's just a tiny speaker. So, yeah, the sound quality is that of a clock radio. It's not really all that great. Like I said, for a clock radio, good enough. And these base ports actually do help make this tiny one inch, one and a half inch speaker sound just about as big as a three inch speaker. If you, if they wanted to shell out more money to make it like a 50 or $60 alarm clock, I got it for around 40. They could have made the sound a little better and actually almost rival that of a halfway decent boom box. My laptop has one and a half inch speakers and it actually has pretty good bass to it. Sounds a lot better and bigger than what it is. And like I said, we have these dual alarms. So what I'm gonna do is set the second one. And if I, there we go. I'm gonna set it to 4.25 p.m. And I went past it. That's good. Okay, then we hit set. And uh, for the heck of it, I'm going to put it on bell. Good. So what I'm going to do is shut that one off, turn on that one. I know you can... You don't really see it too well because, like I said, at this particular angle, it does not really show up very well. But we're going to see how well the bell alarm works because the radio alarm will work dependent upon how loud you set the radio with the volume. So here we go. Let's see how this actually works. That's actually pretty loud. That's very good. It's very similar to that of a uh, of their travel alarm clock. Nice and loud. And that's the volume that it's at. And to stop it, you just simply shut it off. Which, as I said, the ironic part to get used to is that it being pressed in shuts off the alarm. So overall, I am quite impressed with this unit. It runs, like I said, $40. And it comes with a projection display, as we see here on its brightest setting. And it is about four and a half feet from the, uh, from the ceiling right there. So overall, it is, it is pretty good. When you start stretching out the cord, though, the clock wants to move. So hopefully you have a nearby 
outlet or you have a small extension cord because or you have some way to anchor this puppy down and again uh, point out that if you use this knob to focus and this to rotate your projection display I say this is well worth the money the only down the only downfall is it's not a hundred percent obvious to setting it but once you read the manual and do it once or a couple times, it's a no-brainer. Maybe every now and then you might still fumble a little bit, but you'll get it. That and, of course, being that it's a smaller alarm clock, obviously the audio quality is not the greatest, but pretty good for its size. And like I said, it's just a little over a pound, so yeah, it'll move on you. It's definitely worth the purchase. So this is George F551 saying I hope you enjoyed the review and have a good one.